You're all very welcome, and I really mean that. Thanks a million for coming along. Um, now, some of you might have looked at the website where there's, if you haven't, it's, it's worth having a look, SeamusMcNally.net, and it gives, even without the book, it gives some interesting history from the Killian area, Killian Lewisburg area. Um, <clears throat> so, just a, a summary of, of the book and to give you some context on it. But the experts on writing tell us, tell us that our novel should have a central question. This is the question I asked, and it's on the back of the cover of The Heart of the West. How did a country that lost millions to starvation and immigration rise from its knees to win a war of independence against the might of the British Empire within 60 years? Our famous poet, William Butler Yeats, said, the history of a nation is not in parliaments and battlefields, but in what people say to each other <clears throat> on fair days and high days, and in how they farm and quarrel and go on pilgrimage. I've taken the poet at his word and built my story around the lives of ordinary people. It's no coincidence that the main characters are women. <clears throat> Three very inter interesting historical facts from my native area of Killeen combine and intersect and interact to form the background to my historical novel. First, and most personal, when my great-grandmother died in 1956 at 108 years of age, she was the last survivor of the family. It was only months before I was born. This knowledge focused my thinking into realising how relative release and recent the Gartha Moor, the Great Hunger, occurred. The Conley Road runs beside my home place, still called the Conley Road, and leads to the site of the Protestant Conley, set up during famine times to provide not just soup, but housing and land to people prepared to convert to the established Protestant Church. Then, number three, around 1853, shortly after the peak of the famine, an English land agent arrived in the area and he leased a large sheep farm from Lord Sligo. The 40,000 acres of mainly bog and mountain is stretched from Thal of Bourne to Bundaracha and was capable of running over 20,000 sheep. Added to that, <coughs> His, his, um, the, wife, the wife of the land agent was called Matilda Charlotte Houston, or Houston as we pay back our country. She wrote the memoir of her times in Mayo with the title 20 Years in the Wild West. I have that book. And it was every bit as prejudiced and bigoted as the title suggests. But it was of great importance to my work. They say, the victor writes the history, and the vanquished writes the songs. So I felt it was fitting to punctuate the readings of my launch with some of our classic ballads of hardship and immigration. I'm blessed to have some of our finest exponents of the ballad tradition joining me with their enthusiasm and talent this evening. Tonight is really about audience participation, so we want to hear you joining in and singing along, or clapping or tapping, whatever you get up and dance if you feel like it. Um, we want to transport you back in time to the heart of the West. The novel opens with a 1950s letter to America from the last survivor of the Great Famine. 